Well, hello, my name is John Humanic. I'm excited today because I got my brother in Christ, Sergio Sanchez. He is a prophet, a new age prophet that is speaking life into this day and age. A uh, very good friend of mine uh, was actually got a connection through David Hernandez and met him a few years ago when he just kicked off his ministry and got a chance to see him again last month and just love this gentleman of God. He is a son of the Lord and you are in for a treat tonight. You got to watch this entire video because Sergio is going to be preaching and bringing the Holy Ghost fire. And I'm just so excited. Sergio, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me. It's an honor. It's a blessing. And I'm, I'm just very grateful to be here with you today. Awesome, man. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. So why don't you give us a little bit of background, your testimony, how you came to the Lord. Uh, and then if you want to kind of you know work your way into your ministry, things that you're doing. You just came back from an incredible trip in Cali. So just give us give us a lowdown of like what you're doing and what God is moving through in your life. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So I wasn't always saved, wasn't mm -hmm. born in church, though I had godly grandparents that would always pray for me. They would prophesy over me and over my parents. But, you know, at a young age, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, I do know my grandmother prophesying one day, and it wasn't like, you know, getting all high and like, oh, this said the Lord. It was simple conversation, like, you're going to be a man of God one day. You're going to travel. You're going to preach to thousands, and mm -hmm. God's going to use you. Amen. And so I was like, all right, cool, you know, whatever that means. And so I didn't get saved till I was about 17 and a half. I just got done graduating high school and I was running from God. I knew that he wanted to save me. I knew he had a plan for my life. Uh, I got saved uh, before I was 17 and a half. I believe I was like 15, 16 years old. And I was going to church, starting to have a relationship with the Lord. But I was in a in a home where it was I was very abused. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, verbally and physically and going to this church made me feel love made me feel peace and so i just started mm -hmm. going just kept going but it got to a point where uh, my parents were very strict because i used to always get in trouble and so uh they would tell me like no you can't go to church like you got school the next day it was just an excuse so it got so bad that i said god how do you want me to serve you if I got parents that don't let me. I said, you know what, God, I'm done. I'm not going to serve you. I was like, you're not real. You're fake. And I was like, I'm done. <clears throat> Fast forward. I just graduated high school. I'm 17 years old, 17 and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, just got done graduating. And I remember uh, just being so influenced by the world. I was in gangs. I was on drugs. Uh, look, nothing like, like, like I do now. Uh, I was sucked up, shaved head. Uh, it, it was just so bad. I was walking home one day, and I remember just walking by, and I remember seeing a green Honda Civic just flying by. They do a U-turn. This gangster guy runs out, and he runs up to me and goes, hey, let me talk to you. And I was like, sure, like, like what's up? And so basically, he was telling me, like, hey, I know you. Uh, you know, you're this guy and, you know, being in the world, I, I was, uh, I used to talk to like a lot of women and he was like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to start fresh with my girlfriend and you're messing up. And there was a certain name I used to go by back in the day. He said that name. I said, no, you got the wrong guy. I was denying it. Uh, this mm -hmm. guy was like, no, like you're a dead man. So basically this man pulls out a gun. And uh, again, I'm a 17 years old, pulls out a gun straight from the, like underneath his shirt, mm -hmm. puts it at the front of my face and was getting ready to shoot me on the spot. I remember just looking around. I saw a police officer there. He didn't budge. He didn't move. And I knew this world was so messed up because he didn't even jump in and be like, hey, like put the gun down. Mm -hmm. All I remember was seeing a flash. I literally thought I was dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw this flash right before my eyes. I thought he pulled the trigger. Yeah. <laughs> And I saw flashbacks from when I was a child to that present moment. And eventually, like, it just, I don't know if I, it's called blacking out or if I blacked out, but I was still standing there. Everything else cleared up. And all I remember was seeing another guy running out of the same car. He pushes his friend. He says, don't shoot. Don't kill him. That's my friend's cousin. So mm -hmm. I guess he knew my cousin and I knew that guy as well. And so uh, fast forwarding, this guy was like, all right, he goes, 
I'll catch you later. And basically, in, in the gang term in the world, they, they call it green light. So it's a hit on their, uh, a hit that's put on a person's life. And basically, no questions asked. If any neighborhood they see you, no questions asked, kill him. Yeah. He's a dead man. Yeah. And so uh, he put this this green light on me. He said, you got green light, you're a dead man. And I remember just going home and I'm thinking, oh my God, like mm -hmm. what is going to happen? I'm freaking out. I'm overthinking. I said, what am I going to do? I remember an uncle of mine that, that I looked up to as a father figure of mine because I really have my, my dad, my physical, biological father in my life growing up. Mm -hmm. So I looked up to my uncle. I remember him inviting me to church, inviting my mom to church as well. And I'm like, all right, like, let me just go. Like, I'm jacked up anyways. I'm just going to go. Yeah. And uh, I went. I don't remember any of the message, anything like that. All I remember was it was a small church that they rented out for like, uh, they used to have like AA meetings and like, like drug counseling. So they yeah. rented this place out and literally made it into church. And so they would have to put up speakers, tear them down. And it was literally like an empty room. Mm -hmm. So all I remember was being in this empty room, everybody's in the kitchen, drinking coffee, eating danishes. And I'm sitting on a still small chair and I'm in the back of the church, just sitting there thinking about my life, thinking about everything that, that that's going wrong. Yeah. And I remember just doing this, that, you know, the thing like, God, if you are real, speak to me through this book kind of thing, wherever mm -hmm. I put my finger on, that's what you need to speak. So I remember just opening up the Bible. didn't know much about the Bible. I remember it was a Bible that was given to me as a King James Bible, a King James Version Bible. And uh, I said, God, if you are real the way people say you are, speak to me through this. I remember opening it up. And in my carnal mind, I'm thinking, you know, uh, the Lord is speaking to me through the scripture. And in some cases, it really related to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, in, you know, uh, it opened up to Acts chapter 18, verse 9. So in my carnal mind, I'm thinking, oh, man, like God is speaking to me in this in this uh the scripture but mm -hmm. it's actually uh when jesus was talking to paul and silas about preaching the gospel you know yeah. they got arrested for preaching the gospel and so this is what the scripture said and it said like this do not be afraid for i am with you no one is going to hurt or harm you for i have many people in the city and i will protect you and i'm thinking oh my gosh like this literally just happened to me i was in the city yep i was about to get killed and literally, God sent somebody to protect me at mm -hmm. that moment. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this. And I closed the Bible and said, no way, this is not real. Yeah, I, I don't believe God is speaking to me like this. <laughs> but something on the inside, I believe, was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Was already stirring something on the inside. And, and I just thought, let me just open it up one more time. Mm -hmm. And as I opened up, the same scripture opened up to me. And I said, no, wait, like, this is so weird. Like, God yeah. doesn't speak like this. So the third time I said, no, well, maybe if it opens up the third time, the same thing on the third time. Wow. I said, no, I don't believe it. This mm -hmm. is not real. This is fake. So at this point, I closed the Bible. I said, this is weird. This is not God. Like, yeah. this, this is just weird. I get the Bible and I toss it two chairs down or maybe mm -hmm. a chair down for me. And I said, no, this is weird. There was no fan on. There was nobody around me. It was just me and, and, and God there yeah. in, in this empty, empty church while everybody's in the kitchen. The Bible opened up by itself supernaturally. From, imagine, imagine just seeing a, a Bible or a book just opening up to the same thing, like big old chunks of, of chapters just jumping, right? Yeah. Just opening up. So literally the Bible supernaturally opened up to that same scripture it was the holy spirit getting my attention speaking to me yeah it, it was the same scripture acts 18 verse 9 mm -hmm. at that moment again there was nobody around me there was no speakers up they tore every speaker down put them in a room those it was just an empty building i heard the audible voice of god mm -hmm. as if he was right there it was so loud and it was like it was coming out of his speaker and the first thing i heard was son i love you didn't really hear that much you know growing mm -hmm. up though i know my parents loved me but i just you know they were going through their own things that i didn't really hear that growing up so yeah. that was the first thing i heard was son i love you mm -hmm. and i'm thinking oh my god i was speechless I, I you know i had no words to say the mm -hmm. second thing the lord had said was 
if you surrender and give me your life today, you'll never have to worry about those guys ever again. I'll spare your life. I'll protect you. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? It's been 15 years I've been saved by the grace of God. And quite amazing. I've never bumped into the guy. I don't know how he looks nowadays. I don't know what happened. God literally spared my life. Now, the crazy thing is I would bump into people that, that knew him yeah. and they would get saved. And now they're saved, they're filled with the Holy Ghost, and now they're preachers. And mm -hmm. it was like, it's just crazy how God saved me and saved people that, that knew this person. And even people that, that knew me, they said, oh, you go to church now, huh? And at the time, I used to do gospel rap. Please don't yeah. tell me to rap anymore. I don't, I don't have any. I don't have it in me anymore. Uh, sometimes I try to, when my my wife tells me to let it go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but other than that, uh, yeah, people will be like, "Oh yeah, the words on the street," and I'm like, the "Words on the street," and I was like, "Well, praise God, you know." I'm glad you're hearing that I'm going to church mm -hmm. and that I love the Lord. Then you hearing that I'm still out in the world doing who knows what. Yep. And so, uh, fast forward to two three years going by the lord just starts using for his glory and it's nothing about me it was just god takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise yep. and uh, he took me literally drained me out from myself drained me out of my flesh and and placed his holy spirit in me and and now i, I travel the world i preach the gospel uh, i actually wrote my my new book uh mm -hmm. called everything is possible when miracles uh, it's called everything is possible mm -hmm. when faith comes alive miracles are birthed and oh, so oh. i'm preaching the gospel now uh having encounters with the lord and and god is just using me and he right um and god has risen me up and now i i get to share the gospel to people and uh, it's just amazing how he would just choose me and clean me up and save me protect me and really spare my life and say you know what i'm going to use him now for my glory it's just quite amazing yeah it, that is because the thing about it is is that your 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 testimony is amazing and there's gonna be a lot of people that have gone through that similar situation kind of literally like that life before flashes before their eyes and kind of like last you know last ditch and the thing about God is, is that he sees us so powerfully and he, he doesn't look at us in that vein, especially after you're saved, he sees Jesus and Jesus's righteousness. And at that point, guess what? All bets are off. Like you, you become a, a son or a daughter of the King and man, with the Holy ghost in you, there's just nothing you can't accomplish. And you're right. Like he, he does use the foolish to confound the wise and the poor to confound the rich. And it's amazing how he just just takes people sometimes they go through a wilderness period sometimes they just come they're radically saved and boom maybe their life leading up to salvation their wilderness period and then next thing you know they're out there doing god's work and chasing his kingdom man that's amazing stuff wow. yeah so so let's let's talk a little bit about your ministry so you've kind of gone into it you've got a prophetic ministry you do some preaching so you've got evangelism so you've got so it's cool about the the evangelist that's the, also in the prophetic is is that a lot of people who are in the prophetic movement know primarily outside of the prophet to the nations that the prophetic is an inward facing thing it's like it's primarily for christians in the church but obviously god doesn't limit that and we know that god's a respecter of no persons so the spirit of prophecy can drop in anyone at any time and and but you've got the evangelistic aspect which is you know chasing the lost and being able to speak into them why don't you walk a little bit through like how your ministry is uh going uh like the events that you're traveling and all the cool things because this is it's a powerful move to be a combination because an evangelist that can prophesy is game changing because not only can they relate to people but they can speak into them and bring that revelation that's missing and now that can break them out of bad seasons or even like you, you talked about bring them to salvation altogether yes yeah absolutely uh you know it's amazing because uh you know everything's by faith mm -hmm. and so my prayer was god use me to a point where people wouldn't have to say i never heard the gospel or mm -hmm. uh, i'm not saved because nobody told me because i was that one person that when i found away nobody reached out to me mm -hmm. so i made a commitment to the lord i said god with everything that i have within me i want to tell somebody about you i said mm -hmm. in my conversation 
and if I'm taking an Uber ride, I want to tell them about you. And so yep. here we are um, in ministry now and traveling. And even as we step out in faith and, and say, okay, we're going to go to this nation. We're going to go to uh, this city or this state. We're going to preach the gospel. And I love it because every time we preach the word in a church, it's not always the same you know, outcome. There's salvation, there's deliverance, there's healing, there's prophetic word. And I love the prophetic because when there's somebody that you've never met, (laughs) there's like, how does this man know this? It's the Holy Spirit. And uh, I love the gift of the prophetic because whenever you step out and the the Holy Spirit just comes upon you and gives an unction to prophesy, it, it builds and edifies, it corrects and rebukes, and it also brings us back into alignment into the perfect will of God. And so as we're traveling now, we're evangelizing, we're preaching at other churches, we're seeing the lost saved, we're mm-hmm. seeing people get healed, we're seeing people being delivered from oppression, change the, the renewing of their mind is the people are being set free. Yep. And so uh I always would see visions of this when I was younger. I would always have dreams of doing this, but the fact that I'm living the reality, I'm like, God, I never want to take this for granted. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I remember, so as I was growing up, the prophetic was always on my life in a, in a really powerful way, but until someone actually describes it to you, you don't know that a lot of times in the worldly wisdom, you, you think about like, oh, it's a guy's gut feel or, you know, women's intuition. Like that's kind of the, yeah. how the world explains it. Obviously we've got the the opposite side where you've got the psychics and like the, the mystics and stuff that are kind of like seers, but the 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 prophetic is so powerful because of that it, it's it's game changing because i remember one testimony i had was when god started activating mine he says text an old friend that i hadn't spoken to in probably like 30 years and he says text him and i'm just going to summarize it you will live and not die and i hadn't talked to him i couldn't even get his number i you know it's changed i had to call his mom left a message on her answering machine and then finally got a hold of him and I texted to him and he's like, Hey, you know, have you heard what happened to me? And I'm like, no, dude, I haven't talked to you since basically high school. How would I like, <laughs> like know anything? And he goes, yeah, I had a heart attack uh, a few wow. days ago and he was just in his early forties and 99% blockage. He thought he was going to die and he was saved too. So it wasn't like, it was like, you know, he's just walking like uh, just any kind of life. He was, a he was into running, he was weightlifting and all kinds of stuff, but he just, uh, that's just what happened. And uh, it, that word encouraged him. And for me at that point, I was like, okay, because I knew there's a God and had been walking in uh, Christianity for a while, but like this kind of stuff was like, oh, this is like next level stuff. And and it just started to kind of explode. And then I remember David's event where, where I first met you a few years ago and talk about signs and wonders. I remember there was a lady who was uh, demonically uh, possessed and she fell uh, on the floor during the service and she looked like a corpse and i remember another lady and i went over and this was my first experience with like like face-to-face demonic possession and not oppression but like real deal possession and a couple minutes you know the demon leaves we get her up you know we we talk to her and then the next day we see her and her countenance completely changed she went from this literal looking corpse to just this vibrant woman of god wow. and i was like oh my gosh like this is next level and that's what god talks about when you walk yeah. out the life miracle signs and wonders follow you they, they chase you i mean do you have any like uh, radical stories of like maybe like you know obviously this is for us would be crazy but no miracles crazy but like what would be the craziest experience that you've had that kind of just just it kind of it's ingrained in your mind it becomes like those uh, Ebenezer moments where they build those altars in the Old Testament. That's like the the Hebrew word, and it's like that's something I will always remember, and I can't um, I can't forget it. But it becomes a foundation for my faith that I can just build upon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as funny as it may sound, I, I love sharing this story. Mm-hmm. But what builds my faith is always remembering of what took place one time. I remember. Mm-hmm. I was just having a a simple conversation with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, 
I think I was fasting at the time and uh, my dog ate my, my credit card. And so uh, I had to wait for my, my other credit card to come into the mail, start purchasing stuff. But I yeah. was I would go to work around three or four o'clock in the morning. And we uh, used to work by a factory where they would always cook food. Yeah. And one day I smelled like breakfast in the air. And I, I'm a big breakfast guy. Don't always have it, but I just love breakfast. And I remember uh, just simply talking to the Lord. I wasn't praying, wasn't pleading, wasn't, you know, I was just simply like, you know what, God, you know what sounds good right now? And I, and I in my mind, I said, a breakfast sandwich. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> and so I start saying, you know what? When I get paid again, I get my credit card. I'm gonna bless myself with what a breakfast sandwich. And I start naming everything I wanted on the sandwich, oh, just cool. telling God everything that I wanted. I said I want bacon, I want lettuce, I want tomato. I said as weird as it sounds, I want mustard on it, I want ketchup. Like, and I said I want so much bacon that it's falling out of the sandwich. Yeah. And I said, yeah, that sounds good. And I said, you know what, God? Orange juice too sounds good with it. And so I'm just having this mm -hmm. conversation with the Lord. And uh, I'm like, praise the Lord. Uh, three hours goes by. And I go inside, you know, because I was working outside. I, I go inside the, the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And the supervisor hands me this this big old thing wrapped in like white cloth and i'm thinking oh my goodness all right cool i was like thank you so much i was like yeah. whatever this is like thank you i put in my work jacket and they end up handing me some orange juice afterwards mm -hmm. and I look at it, i said well praise god i said i was just talking to the lord yep and saying that i wanted some orange juice <laughs> mm -hmm. and they looked at me kind of weird and i was like yeah like i'm just joyful over the orange juice put it on my work jacket and uh went to the break room probably like 20 minutes after that. And, and I'm just thinking, God, like, praise the Lord. Like, thank you for this orange juice. And uh, didn't realize anybody else was, was in the break room. Uh, I just, me and the Lord, I just focused on the Lord, put the orange juice on the table. And then uh, I'm taking this big old thing wrapped in white cloth and I, I put it on the table and I said, whoa, what is this thing? Let me, let me open this up and, and check it out. So I I'm unraveling it, un, you know, unfolding some things. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, there's a breakfast sandwich in this white cloth, <laughs> but it's so funny because everything that I mentioned on a breakfast sandwich is yep. had, and it had so much bacon that it was falling out of the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It was so funny. Yep. And I, I remember just jumping up out of my chair saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Like I was, I was yep. excited. Yes. And uh, somebody in back of me, uh, I guess like the chair flew back and hit a table mm -hmm. and there was somebody sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I start preaching the gospel to my coworkers that yep. were in there. And I said, Jesus just gave me this breakfast sandwich. I was having a conversation with them, told them everything I wanted on the sandwich. And this was given to me unexpectedly. Yep. They get saved over a conversation on a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> they get That's saved. Great. They get filled with the joy of the Lord. Yep. Our boss comes in. More work, coworkers come in, trying like checking out, like what's going on. Like people are laughing and like getting excited. Yeah. They start preaching the gospel to him. They said, "Tell him the story." We start telling. Them. They get saved. Literally, the whole job site starts getting saved over a breakfast sandwich. So, anytime I think about miracles. I think with this breakfast sandwich and thinking of how salvation took place over a breakfast sandwich. <laughs> you know, that, that, yeah, praise the Lord, right? Like that's, right. that's, that's both his humor and his power, like at the same time. And like, that's the thing about the prophetic, like that's people don't realize the power of your words and the yes. power, like people talk about positive thinking and no, no, no. This is about faith in the Holy spirit. When you speak those things and you're a son or a daughter of the King, they come to pass because we live in a monarchy and that's how, that's how decrees and written law works. Yeah. And and then he adds on, like, I thought this was great. I thought, okay, you're, <laughs> you're just going to stop at a breakfast sandwich. I was excited about that. But then to have the Holy ghost move in and drop the spirit for the fire and then salvation over a breakfast sandwich. Like, I mean, over that's like, that's Crazy. like a book, man. Like you could write a book on that, like a, you know, salvation over a breakfast sandwich. Like that sounds <laughs> awesome. Like that's incredible. Like that's the kind of stuff that like people think about the Christian walk is boring and dull. I'm like, man, it is the furthest from it, man. Like it is yeah. just, it's faith to faith, glory to glory and excitement. And 
you know, there's parts where you're trying to shed your flesh and you're trying to let God control things and you're trying to cling to things and you're like, I, I don't want to give it to you, but I do, but I don't know how. And like, right. it's the kind of stuff that like just stirs people's faith up and, and, and moves mightily. That's amazing. That's amazing. So what I want to do now is I want to give you a chance to kind of prophesy into the audience. I know that this is a, a recorded video and there's going to be some folks that's going to catch it as it comes out. And, and then obviously later, it, the thing is, is that uh, for those people that are listening, that God's word's timeless because he doesn't exist in time. He created time for us, but he exists out time. So when he speaks, it doesn't matter if you watch this video when it comes out or you watch it in five years, the word's going to be relevant to you. So I want to give you a chance to kind of just let the Holy Spirit fill you and just speak. And if you have names, you have colors, and you know, whatever you the Lord wants you to do, rebuking diseases, I'm just going to let you flow. And uh, I'm going to give you the stage. And then when we're done, I'll come back and uh and then we can kind of like talk about how they can find you and you know support your ministry and get your books and you know and then obviously check out your events because i know you're traveling and so they, they're obviously going to want to see you in person if they can amen absolutely you know even as you mentioned you know about hmm. prophesying and, and praying with people the moment you said that is you know sometimes we're like well i, I don't have a word or i don't know what god would say but the moment you said all right we're going to open up the the floor for you to prophesy mm -hmm. things just started coming and uh so I'll, i want to pray as well uh, there's someone you're watching you just went to the doctors and you found out that you've been having problems in the digestive system i hear god saying that he's bringing healing and i hear god saying that he's flushing out your system I hear God saying, don't look at the situation for what it is. For the Lord said, he said, speak over yourself. He said, call things that be not as though they were. And I hear the Lord saying, my hand is upon you. And even now, I see in the spirit that you're going to feel some heat over that area. Somebody as well, you're watching, uh, your back is being healed right now. You're going to feel heat on your back. Father, I pray that you will bring complete healing in the mighty name of Jesus right now. Shabbat Asidar and Shabbat. Lord, touch them by your Holy Spirit even now. You're a woman, you're watching, and you've been questioning and saying, God, why do I keep having these, these dreams of business ideas why do i keep even uh, you're, you're wide awake and you're having daydreams as well of you preaching the gospel you're casting out devils god says i'm not just showing you these things just to show you he said i'm showing these things because eventually i'm going to use you in this area and you're going to prophesy you're going to cast out devils you will lay hands on the sick and see them recover there's a woman you're watching from your hospital bed right now you're watching as we speak and i hear the lord saying that he's raising you out of that bed i feel the anointing even out flowing from this camera into that screen where you're watching father i speak even now and i pray that you will bring complete healing make them whole in their body lord we cancel every infirmity we cancel every sickness in the name of jesus now Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would touch them now. Lord, do a miracle. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke every lie that was spoken to them from the enemy. Lord, we believe the report of the Lord. And we believe in your healing touch. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Lord, those ones that are watching, they just want an encounter with you. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will encounter them. We thank you now, Jesus, that you want to have an encounter with us, even as much as we want to have an encounter with you. Lord, show them how much you love them. Lord, encounter them even now. Some of you are feeling the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit just fill your room now you're watching in your car you're feeling the Holy Spirit fill that place that's his glory and I can I'll, I'll tell you this you can always tap into it all you have to do 
is simply invite him. Lord, take them deeper, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we love you. There's also somebody you're watching. You've been dealing with stomach pain. Lord, we ask that you will remove it in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring complete healing. We thank you, Father, that you are doing the work. We thank you, Lord, that you are in control. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you that tumors are leaving. I literally just saw in the spirit right now, tumors disappearing. I saw cysts being removed right now in the spirit. I saw them disappearing and dissolving. Somebody with a skin condition, you're being healed right now. You're seeing your skin clear up right now. That's the Holy Spirit touching you. Lord, do it in Jesus' name. Wow. I really feel His, His Holy Spirit, His presence really strongly right now. My goodness. Even though it, it's a recorded video, I believe that this is for you. God's timing is perfect. And even though it's a recorded video, God's timing is perfect because you're watching it and it's the right time right now. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for that healing. We thank you, God, that you're moving on their behalf. There, there's, a, there's a couple you're watching right now. Oh, my goodness. And you're saying, God, I don't know how we're going to make it financially. You're believing for the Lord to make a way, and, and I hear rent. You're believing for the Lord to, to bless you financially for bills, for rent. I hear the Lord saying, no good thing do I hold back from those who walk upright with me. The Lord said, continue to put him at the center. Continue to pray. Continue to trust him. God says, I will make a way. I'm seeing that financial, uh, financial breakthrough happening now. That burden of worrying, that burden of God, when will the finances be released? God is lifting it now, and God says, I will pour out that blessing. Lord, bless him this day. Hallelujah. In the next two days, God says, you're going to begin to see supernaturally that he's going to release finances. God says he's taking care of it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll release it back to you. All right. All right. Yeah, I actually, I gotta, I gotta continue this because, um, so the Lord, as you were, as you're prophesying, uh, I had a, a word dropped in me. This, so there's a, there's a lady that's going to be watching this. Her name's going to be Shelly. And, uh, I see that there's, uh, issues with your heart and I'm not sure if you know about them or not, but what I want to do is I'm going to declare healing over your heart that the muscle fibers in your heart are going to grow, that your veins and arteries that pump blood into the heart, that pump blood out of the heart, as well as you know the aspects of going into your body, that they're going to be restored, that you're going to be strong, that your blood pressure will regulate. Not only that, you'll be very, very powerful. Your, your strength will return. Your strength will be renewed like the eagle. And you'll feel, the, I feel like you're a little older and you're going to feel like your, your college days, your high school days, where God is just moving you back up to that next level, ascending you to the top of the mountain, just as Moses went up the mountain and he disappeared into the clouds as he got closer to God. That's what God is doing is he's going to pull you up and you're going to drop the bricks that are in your backpack and allow you to ascend to a higher place and move you into a greater season. And, and when that happens, there'll be nothing that's going to stop you. You're going to continue to go. Even if your name is not Shelly, you can receive these words because words are spoken corporately from the prophetic and you can receive them, just receive them in faith because if you're struggling with cancer, and I actually see that now that there's some someone that's gonna be watching that's got cancer in the brain and this is something that you may have sharp pains and you're dealing with um, you know, medication and pain pills and in that moment you're struggling and you're wondering, how many more days do I have to deal with this? Am I going to live? Am I going to be able to, do I have 
have to go to therapy and uh, chemotherapy and all these other things to get going. But God's going to do a miracle and he's going to blow away that cancer in your brain. You're not going to, you're going to have a scan that has it. And you're going to go back to the doctor and the doctor say it's gone. And he's going to say, it's a miracle that only the hand of God, the finger of God is going to push that cancer out of you and it'll be done. The Holy Spirit's going to move on your behalf because the, we plead the blood of Jesus over your life because he took the curse when he was hung on the cross and all of those things were attached to his body, all these infirmities and things, and you will no longer have to deal with the dread and the pain and the suffering that you've been going through, and you will be totally set free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So Sergio, um, so this is great. I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Why don't you um, talk about how people can find your ministry uh, things that you might be doing coming up. You could talk about your book, uh, where they might get it. And, you know, obviously talk about where they can find you for some of the upcoming events and some cities that you may be going to. Yes, absolutely. So if you guys are on social media, such as YouTube, we're on YouTube. You can find our channel. You type in Sergio Sanchez Ministries. You can go to our website for more information about us, about the ministry, who we are, traveling events, SergioSanctionsMinistries.com. There you'll find all the information. There's YouTube links. Uh, there's links for my books. And I just wrote a new book as well. That's on the website. Click it. It'll lead and redirect you. And you can find me on, on all social media platforms. Facebook, just type in Sergio Sanctions Ministries. Also on Instagram, Sergio Sanctions. You'll see me. I'll have the blue check mark i'm notified or i'll have the blue check mark yep. verif verification or i have the blue check mark that shows that i'm verified so you'll know that it's me and follow our ministry you'll be blessed by it uh, walk in the prophetic constantly evangelize constantly cast out devils we love it all and so uh, if that's what you love come follow us and, and for more of that adventure stuff. So it's, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, walking with God is incredible and uh, I know your ministry is exciting and it's just getting started. And I know that the Lord uh, has got you in this season right now where he's going to continue to curate you. One of the beautiful things I've learned as a part of this is, is that a lot of times people will see an individual success and, uh, and then wonder, wow, that was really quick, but they forget about all the time and energy they put in behind the scenes and the countless yes. work and all the things that they do. And that the thing that I remember I heard, although I haven't been able to totally confirm it, but I do believe it's probably true is Solomon, when he put out those Proverbs that he didn't actually get his renown uh, internationally until after he put out the Proverbs. So he had to publish. 3,000 proverbs and then people read them and they're like wow this is really good and then they started coming to him and then they kind of like the queen of sheba saw okay this guy's next level we gotta we gotta start paying tribute to him to to be able to get advice because he was functionally a life coach for you know these leaders and that's the part that a lot of people miss is that these ministries like ours we've been we've been doing content social media for years and years and years and then i, I feel it in the spirit like you're in that like that plateau where God's continually refining you and getting you ready. And then at some point here soon with even, even within a year, maybe even less, you're going to see that upward explosion and God taking you to the next level. And I just feel it, that it's going to be amazing. And the, you know, you're going to be an entrepreneur and, you know, the authorship piece is just the beginning and you'll be mentoring men and women. And it's just a part of who you are as a, a son of God to be able to just take your experience and take the the gifting and the anointing because that's what god does is he blesses us to be a blessing to others and he fills us up and we're just like a cup that run us over and the oil just keeps flowing because it's fresh every single day and you're gonna get people now where it's i'm excited to see uh, how your ministry is growing we're definitely going to have to have you come back here like two to three months check in on some stuff i know you're a musician too but maybe break out the guitar <laughs> and uh yeah, have you do some songs for us? We like we actually had a, a a gentleman here do a recording session yesterday that we'll be publishing him. And so, hey, I don't got a music bone in my body. I'm the, I'm an artistic kind of guy, but I love it when uh, I get a chance to talk to some folks that are uh, super talented and uh, can just stir up the spirit because there's nothing that can stir the spirit up that other than worship. And we saw that with David and Psalms and 
all those beautiful things. That's it is awesome. So I'm super happy for you to come on board. Uh, let God bless and multiply you in ways that you can't imagine, and uh, allow the hand to just God just continue to push you forward. I'm I'm excited to see what He's going to do with you. I I know it's going to be pretty amazing stuff. Amen. I receive it. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm very honored to be on here and uh, looking forward to see what God is about to do. Amen. Amen. I'm I'm excited too. I have great expectation. And uh, I, I know that on this side of eternity, we're not going to really truly understand the impact that we have. But I know that on the other side, I pray that he reveals it. And I suspect for all of us, it will be transformative that uh, these words go out and we just don't know the full impact, especially social media and how the salvations can happen at any time because we just do our part and God does his. We add our our natural. He has his super on top. And uh, that's exciting to see how he does it and uh, the people that are affected. I know that it was interesting the other day I had a good friend of mine. Uh, he, you know, messaged me and said, Hey, uh, he had his friend said, you got to check this online guy out. And it happened to me, me. And it was kind of surreal at the time because you're like, you're really humble about this piece because you're like, wow, now, now I I'm, I'm the one that a lot of folks are excited to see and being able to do that. And that's, that'll be you too. I, I believe that that's going to be the case. And then we'll do it, you know, cheerfully and joyfully to the Lord, you know, deflect that glory back to him and allow yes. him to receive that in a, in a magnificent way. We'll stay low and let the Holy Spirit uh, humble us and keep us in the place of um, just contentment and comfort. And he'll rise us up when he needs to we'll, because, because we're filled with him. We'll pour him out and then we'll return back to that quiet place and just get refreshed and continue to operate in a kingdom mindset. So I'm excited to see what God's going to do with you. And uh, uh, God bless. And uh, we'll definitely catch up again here soon, man. Man, yes, absolutely. Thank you. No problem. All right.